Welcome, welcome, welcome to Destiny Life Center International. My name is Pastor Roland Cooper, the senior pastor of this great work in the city of Boston, also in the town of Randolph. We thank you for joining us today. If this is the first time that you are viewing us online, we welcome you with a hearty welcome. We are a church in the city of Boston where people are our business. We are very intentional about bringing transformation to the lives of men and women who desire to grow um, and become what God wants them to become. For those of you that are sick and tired of doing church as normal, we encourage you to come and join us. Currently, we are in a series studying and the importance of being covered, being protected, because of the God of this world, who is Satan, whose desire is to destroy the people of God. So please come and join us. We welcome you where you'll feel a warm and a very inspired word where God will bless you. God bless you. If you can stand, please stand for the reverence of the word of God, please. As you're standing with you, kindly turn to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. And you'll be seated for a long time, so I mean, you'll be, you'll be nice for you to stand. And as you reverence the word of God. Maybe we read just over three verses this morning. Exodus chapter 12, from verse 21. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Verse 22. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and, and on both sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top of his and sides of the door frames and will pass over that doorway. And he will not punish, sorry, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Father, we thank you for your word. It's alive and well. We bind the enemy that tried to rob this word from your people's hand today. So we pray, Lord, that you open our eyes, that you may behold wondrous truths from your law. Cover us today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We take your seats, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For those of you that were not with us for some time, I need to go back and come forward a little. So we began at this series that talks about the necessity of being covered. We began this series by speaking about Esther. You remember we spoke some time about Esther. And Esther, of course, realized that her people were in trouble. So she asked the people, the Jews, to cover her in prayer and, and fasting. And of course, by covering her in prayer and fasting, she was able to go in and get liberty or liberation for the Jews from the enemy. Then we move on from Esther to the book of Genesis chapter 3, where we spoke about God when he placed man in this garden. He gave man instruction that man is not supposed to touch a certain tree. Of course, man violated God's command, and we suffer the consequences of it. After man violated that command, the Bible says man went and hid from God. As a matter of fact, not only did he hate from God, but he cut fig leaves to try to cover himself. Moses says in his writing there, in the book of Genesis, that Adam and Eve saw that they were naked. I believe that Moses, in his wisdom, did not really meant to tell us that they were unclothed because they had no need for clothing. Adam and Eve didn't know clothing, but we saw them that were naked there in last week. When we sit before you, I said that word really mean they were uncovered. Say to me, please, they were what? Ah. Uncovered. They're meaning that they were unprotected. That they, because they violated God's command, they opened themselves to all the attack of the evil one. And today we moved on from Genesis chapter 3 
into the book of Exodus. And in Exodus, we began sharing about a command that God gave to Moses to give to his children, the Jews. Of course, the time will not permit me to go back into history, but you should know by now that the Jews were in captivity for 400 plus years. To be precise, they were held in captivity for 430 years. They were under the cruel hand of Pharaoh. Pharaoh punished them for 430 years. Many of uh, the Jews that entered Egypt uh, before they died out, and the generations that followed were held in slavery. And after a while, uh, they moved from just being scattered all over Egypt, and they got a certain place in Egypt that was called Goshen. Say to me, please, Goshen. Goshen is where the Jews lived in Egypt. In Goshen, the people of God lived there. And if you ever visit Las Vegas, or there are some parts in Boston that is similar, that you could go certain parts in Boston and find that certain sect of people just live in a certain section. If you go down Chinatown, you find only Chinese living there. When I went to Las Vegas some time ago, I saw that there is a section there where the Korean lives, the Japanese lives, the Chinese lives. I mean, just like little cities inside of a big city. That's what happened there in the, in the, in the land of Egypt. That Goshen was one of those little cities inside of Egypt, and that's where the Jews are living. But while they're there, of course, under the clear hand of Pharaoh for 400 plus years, when they decide to crowd to God under the oppression of the enemy. So I cried out to God, God raised up a man by the name of Moses. Come on, say to me, Moses. Moses. He raised up Moses, and one day God said to Moses, I want you to go down to Egypt, and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Come on, say to me, please. Let, let my people, people go. go. And God did not just tell um, Moses to say those words to Pharaoh, just so that the people of God can be free to live as they want. God gave specific instruction to Moses as to why he wanted to free them from under the oppressive hand of the enemy. He said, I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they may worship me. Now if you look carefully and you look at the text there, and you can see later on as God sent the ten plagues there in the land of Egypt and so forth, you observe that the very same slavery mentality is on us today. Because the enemy's job is to keep us in bondage so we cannot worship our God. Yeah. Yeah. And if it comes time for us to worship God, we find it's a struggle. It's a struggle to get to pray. Uh, we are so needy people that when we come before God, it's give me, give me, give me, give me. We never take some time to express our gratitude to God for who He is and for what He's done. We are just people that are needy. One preacher says, we are consumers. We always need. But there's a time when we must stop and give God what He deserves. For the Lord did not save us to take us just to heaven. Talk to me somebody. He saved us. He snatched us out of Egypt. Egypt represents the world. And he brought us into his kingdom so that we may come and talk to me somebody. So that we may worship him. Sometimes whenever I hear the name of God, there's a curse word attached to it from somebody. Because people refuse to reference Almighty God in whom we live and move and have our being. This God who decide how long you and I should be on this earth, you find there in the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 24, the Bible says, for God is the one who determined how long we live on this earth, the exact places where we should live, and he did that so that men would reach out and find him, though he's not far from any of us. So he tells me that the reason why you and I are still on this side of the grave is because God wants to give you a chance to have a relationship with him. That's so we can make my money, buy a nice house and live on the Cape and have a boat and go fishing. Uh -uh. God has bigger plans in store for you and I. Can I have an amen? amen? So here is Moses. Right down there. And he gave him specific instructions. He said, Moses, 
I want you to tell the men, not the sisters. And I'm saying this to you because in a few days from now, the world will be celebrating what is known as Father's Day. But as we look around in this church, every one of you that are in this room has a father. Everybody. Some of our fathers are gone. But everybody in this room has a father. Can I have an amen? amen? You came into this world through the lines of a man. Unfortunately, some of the men are not here. Some people or some children has bad experiences with their fathers. And we're going to talk about fathers in a fathers in a few days because I want to stress some things in this text as you read it. And sometimes we just read through a text and glance over, but you, I want you to pay attention to what God is saying to Moses concerning his people. He says, I want you to speak to the men and tell the men to go and get a lamb or a goat. Not just any lamb or any goat. But I want you to tell them to get a male lamb or a male goat. It's something special about the men. Yeah. Why is it that the men are wanted? That the enemy is after the men like crazy. Yeah. No. Last week I shared with you of the four major responsibility that God has given to us as fathers, I wish to God that this room was back with men today. Four major responsibilities. One of them, God said to the men, you got children, I want you to be the provider for your family. God has called us as men to be the provider for our families. Yes, we thank God for sisters that are working and helping us. That's what the Bible says. Women are called to what? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Ladies are called the help me or the helper that God has sent to help us to do what He called us to do. And then He says, not only are we supposed to be the providers, but He says we are to be the protectors of our families. God never intended for the sisters to be the protector of the family. Unfortunately, we live in a society today where the enemy has dismantled the family. And therefore, we have sisters. I'm driving with my grandchildren to school in the morning. And who do we see? That are standing by the way serving their babies. Put them on the school bus. Who do we see? I've been in teachers' meetings. I've been on field trips. And every time I go on a field trip, I may find one brother in there. Always a sister. Where are all the men? Amen. I'm showing you something. And I'm not blasting men. I'm saying there's something wrong with the picture. Yeah. And not only God called the men to be the provider and the protector, but God also called the men to be the priest of the family. Yes. God called the men to be the prophet in the family. Big responsibility. And God saw that the, what the man was doing. And God says, it is not good for the brother to be alone. I must send him some help. Thank God for the sisters. Amen. Thank God for the sisters. Thank God for the sisters. Get yourself a male goat. Or a male sheep. And I want you to slice the neck of that animal and drain the blood in a basin. And I want you, Moses, to tell them to take hyssop. Look it right in your back. You say, I want to take hyssop. And some of you wonder, Pastor, what is hyssop? Hyssop is a type of herb that belongs to the mint family. It's extremely bitter. It's not something that is pleasant to taste. But I want you to dip that bitter herb into that basin with blood. And I want you to take that blood and pass it upon the sides of your door frame and on the top. And I want you guys to take that lamb or that goat and roast it. Do not boil it and do not eat it raw. Right there in your Bible. 
He says, I want you to roast it and roast it just as it is. <laughs> With all the internal organs in there. Now, and for those of us that are Palestinians, <laughs> we all know that we don't eat food that is not seasoned. <laughs> Come on, you all know what I'm talking about. You try to eat some food that isn't seasoned. I, listen, I, I have a grandson, and I just spoke about him today. And that grandson does not like avocados. And one day I decided, you know, as he's always looking at me eating avocados, and he said to me, No, I said to him, said, I, I want to try a piece of avocado. I said, I put the avocado in his mouth, and this is him. I said to him, Eat this fast and swallow it. And his eyes are closed. I just. It's not going to happen with five minutes, I said, spit it up. Because it can't, just can't go down. I could just see some of us trying to eat that meat that is roasting. And listen, he says, I want to eat that meat with bread that has no yeast in it. It's hard. And I want you to eat it. Hurry. That means you have no time to chew. <laughs> eat it in a hurry. Right there in your back. Then he says, eat it with your shoes on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I'm saying something to you, brothers and sisters. He says, eat it with your shoes on. Yes. Tuck your coat inside. Yes. Get ready because just a few moments from now, you're getting ready to leave yes. Egypt. Right. I'm getting ready to bring you outside. Yes. See, God is getting ready to do some things with us and he's going to shake us from our comfort zone. Think for a moment. He's not picking out a nice donkeys and horses, but he's bringing out a pizza. Hallelujah. He says, eat it bitter. Eat it like this. And he said, let the man. And he says, why are you doing this? Make sure that nobody come outside. I know we as Afro-American folks, we are nosy people. And when you hear noise, we tend to, you pull the blind. Come on, you're not talking the truth. Talk to me somebody. We are pulling blind because we want to see what's happening outside. And for some of us, that's not enough. We're going to try to open the door and go outside. commanded them to do. And one of those Jews had decided, you know what? I can't see anything. I'm hearing crying coming from over there and crying coming from there. I need to see who got killed. So they just decide to walk outside. I'm telling you, the person who stepped out from under cover, the person who stepped outside would definitely be killed by the dead angel. So today I want to talk to you about the benefits of being covered. Come on, somebody. The benefit of being covered. And I'm talking to you because I realize that in this city, can't speak of the other cities, and I've traveled around the world, and I've seen people move from church to church, searching for something, have no clue what they're looking for, because there is only one God. Come to me, somebody. There is only one God and one mediator between God and man. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. One God. One God. I did a funeral a few days ago and while I'm standing there inside of the funeral home because that group of people does not go to church. They said, no, anybody in church, they're going to hell. Well, unfortunately, I guess I'm going to go to hell because I've always been in church. Well, those people do not enter the church. They, they'll go to a funeral home, and that day, that family had a lot of those people in there. And I said, okay, no problem. And when I realized that that set of people were there, I decided to preach the Bible. All right. 
Then I lift up my Bible and I said, you see this book? No man can add anything to this book. And no man can take anything away from this book. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And I said to them that this book says, Jesus Christ speaking, he says, I am, come on, say to me, please, John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And some of you may have some of those people in your family. I know, because I got some in my family too. And I said to them, Jesus says, I am the way. Which means that no man. And I said to them, Trinidadians, Americans, Russia, where you are, from the White House to the Ghana, no man can come to God except they come through Jesus. And I call his name Bolton. I said, Jesus. His name is Jesus. And I'm watching their lips to see they mention the name Jesus. Nobody. When I said, say Jesus. They wouldn't say the name Jesus. And I thought, well, okay, fine. So then you have a different God than the God of Israel. Uh, of course, at the end of the service, I says, I want everybody to re repeat this prayer after me. I don't know what that. Dear God. Dear God. I repent today. They will say a word. They lock their lips down. But they cannot lock the air from here. But I have to say. Let's go. I have I'm not sure. Today is a prayer meeting going on there in the Jim Rice Field. So if you got time to go over there at 3 p.m., I encourage you to go and be with those in the city. So, so citywide prayer today at 3 p.m. at the Jim Rice Field. I am going to go home and get me some sleep first. For those of you that are younger, please join my men on there. Number one, benefits of, remain, of remaining under a covering. It positions you and I to be in the place where we can hear from Almighty God. And Jesus Christ says, My sheep knows my voice, and they follow my call, which tells me that if you that are here today have any children, and your child could be outside playing with a bunch of children, and something is wrong with that child, even though you may be in a group of women just having fellowship and eating and laughing, and there's music playing, when that child screams, and says, Mommy, it doesn't matter who you are, man. That song enter your ears, and you know that that song comes from your child. Even though there were hundreds of children out there, because every child, every mother knows the voice of their child. Jesus says, My sheep knows my voice. Which tells me, Pastor Lisa, that there are many people that are in the church that have no clue of what the voice of God is. They assume they know the voice of God. People say to me from time to time, God said, and when I check it, when I check what they say with this, it's night and day. And the way to know the voice of God is that God always speak in accordance with his word. I'm helping you. Remember this. That God always speak and is supported with his word. Yes. So if you hear a word and it's not biblically sound, or you need to check the word of God and see if it's supported with the word. If it's not supported with the word, dump it. Amen. That's because you had too much ice cream and carrot cake. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Number two, being covered. And staying under the covering protects us from the destroyer. And I want us to look at Psalms 91 at the last few verses, please. Psalms 91. Most of us in this room are familiar with Psalms 91, but I want us to look at the last few verses, I think from verse 14. Psalms 91. I need to put on the screen, please. Can somebody put on the screen, please? Psalms 91. And this is what the Bible says. Amen. Psalms 91. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody is trying to find it on there. Amen. Psalm 91. Look at verse 14. The scripture says, Because he loves me. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? The 
Lord. Is that David? Who is speaking? Because he loves me. Who is speaking? It's the Lord speaking. God is saying, because he loves me. Come on, read it, read it. I will I rescue him. Come on. I will, I will protect him. him. For he acknowledges my name. Go up to verse 1. He that dwelleth, come on, you're on the King James Version. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Where is that? Ah, shall abide under the shadow. That's the covering, brothers and sisters. God is saying, this is the benefit of those who love me. He says, I will protect him because he acknowledges my name. Come on, next verse. He will come. He, he may call. Come on, he may call. He what? He may call. He what? He will call. He may call. He will call. He will call on me and I will. Take that to the Bank of America. God is saying that those who love me, they'll call upon me and I will answer. I will be with you. Hallelujah. He says, I will bring you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. And he says, longevity will be yours. Last verse, last verse. Come on, come on, last verse. Say what? With long life, I will satisfy Promises of God, it protects us from the destroyer. And let me just say this pertaining to this area of protection. When folks move from church to church and hearing this and that and all kinds of stuff, they are confused. I'm not sure. Is that? Now, now the Bible speaks of two groups of people. It speaks of the Berean Christians and the Thessalonians. The, the Berean Christians, when they hear the word of God, they go home and they sit with their Bibles. And they say, let me check to see what the preacher is saying is in line with the word of God. Yes, that sounds good. I think that's in the Bible. But the Bible says that healing is the children bread. Oh yeah? Let me go on to find that scripture. Healing is the children bread. But I can't find it. Where did the Bible say so? Now let me pause right here. Because I want to talk a little about Bible stuff. And I'm moving back and forth. I want to talk to your Bible study. Now, some of you take Bible study to be a light matter. And then, the Pastor Berman, I know the Bible. I have you. Thank you, know the Bible. But unless you make the effort to study God's Word, you never know the Bible. Because the Word of God is spiritual. It's spiritual. You must take time to study the Bible. And the destiny, we have created opportunity, gift to gift to you. So that you can come on Wednesday evenings where you can sit with your Bibles, not with your iPad. <laughs> and I do have an iPad. <laughs> but I encourage you to walk with your Bible. Feel it, people. <laughs> so if I say, turn to the book of Nehemiah. You and me wondering, what kind of food is Nehemiah? Because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Walk with your Bibles, please. On Wednesday evenings, at various places. And Brother Lincoln will put in the place, the various places that we, we are having Bible study. We, we was just in Boston last Wednesday evening. Folks were out and come with their Bibles. I need to know what Paul is saying. So we are in the book of Romans. Yeah. That's good. I read Romans since I've been saved a hundred times. Come again. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> so Bible study is very important. So I encourage you to come on out on Wednesday evening. Prayer begins at 6 p.m. And Bible study begins at 7 p.m. You will not be there all night. It's only for 90 minutes. Thank you so much, Pastor Wayne. Bible study is only for 90, 90 minutes. minutes. That's good. 90 minutes is a long time. Mm -hmm. A movie is longer than that. Amen. <laughs> Number three. Staying under the covering provides us with God's peace. 
He promised his peace. In Exodus chapter 12, Moses said to them, Whatever you do, when you hear the noise outside, continue to eat your meat. Stay inside. Don't even look outside. Don't even make an attempt to go outside. Because if you leave and go outside, you will be killed. No. Excuse me. I, I am. Um, this has been a rough week for me. Two days ago, I'm turning on my, my social media and um, I saw we are not pastor who is a dear friend of mine in this city. He and I have done ministries together. He came to Jubilee multiple times. And I know him quite well. As a matter of fact, once he said to me, Pastor, but you have been very instrumental to me in me being who I am today. And this brother, and of course, married someone and they relocated in another state. And I just got word where his stepson shot him to death. Wow. And of course, Mr. Blow, and some of you perhaps would know him if I mentioned his name. The love of his family dearly. But I'm saying something to you, brothers and sisters, because I want to show you how important it is for us to be covered. Come on, say it to me, please. Start to death. It's a blow to the churches in Boston. He's from Boston. Blow to the churches. He preached in many, many churches in this city. Daughter, good, loving man, married 59 years old. He got up that morning and never knew that he would make it back to his bed in the evening. Shut to bed. Let's move on. God's peace. God gives us his peace because we are secure inside of him. Number four, staying under the covering puts us in a place where we walk in humility. Please understand that God is not protecting you because you are special. Because you are so worthy that hey, hey, this, is, this is cool. My name is Bishop Coop. I'm Apostle Coop. Ah! God is not concerned about your titles. He's not concerned about how much title and degree that you have behind your name. Your name is Cooper, as that's what God calls you by. Not Pastor Cooper, not a Pastor Cooper. God's concerned about the soul of the individual, not about your title. It helps you to remain humble before Almighty God. You know it. That is because of God's mercy why you have that pain. Give me, give me. Just two more minutes, please. Final, final one. It pleases God when his children walk in obedience. Pleases God when his children walk in obedience. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, at the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount, and if that's all that we have, that would be enough to help us to live on this earth. Five, six, and seven chapters in the Gospels in Matthew. But in Matthew chapter 7, as he gets ready to wrap up his Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. he said something to his disciples. Yeah. In verse 24. Can you put it on the screen, please? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And I want us to read it together, please. Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. He says in verse 24, Whosoever hear these sayings of mine. Sounds like James speaking. Do not only be a... Come on, say to me, please. Do not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer. For whosoever hear the word of God and do not put them into practice like a man who watches himself in a mirror and walk away and think that he's okay. Let me just say it again, please. Whosoever hear the word of God and do not do them is like a man who looks at himself in a mirror. He knows that there are things that need to be fixed on him. But he walks over here and says, I'm okay. Just as I am. And the Bible calls that man a fool. Jesus says, therefore, come and read with me, please. Therefore, everyone hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. It's like a, you see what he's saying? He's like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Come on, man, next verse. The rain came down, streams rose, winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had foundation on the ground. Next verse, please. 
Then he says, but everyone, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a fool. It's like a fool. I know, Pastor God, he called me a fool. Ah, Jesus did. Jesus did. I'm always saying what he said. He says, the man who do not do them is like a foolish man. Einstein says, it's an insanity to do the same thing over and over again and to expect a different result. He says, like a fool who built his house on the sand. Yeah? And he says, the same elements came. The rain, the streams, and the wind. And beat against the house. And it fell with a... Now Jesus Christ, although he was a carpenter's son, of course, we know he, he learned he learned carpentry. But he's not speaking about building an edifice. He's not speaking about that. He's talking about obedient and disobedience. That's what he's saying. He said, if you are obedient to do what I say, you are a wise man. If you decide, and it all may boil down to a decision. Do I decide to walk in obedience to God's command or to disobey? He gave the very same choice to Adam and Eve. He says, Adam, you're free to eat from all the trees in the garden. But of this one, the day you eat it, the day you touch it, you shall surely die. Adam says, fine, I'm not touching it. And of course, Sister Eve was right there. And when Sister Eve did, she went over. And the Bible says in verse 6 that she ate and she gave some to her husband who was with her. And brother Adam failed to protect his family. Pastor Cooper, is that right? Look at it there in your Bible. In Genesis chapter 3, you find it there. Adam was right there. He forgot his assignment. When he was having the conversation with the devil, he should have said to her, Girlfriend, that's not the voice of God. Come on. That's not the voice of God. My sheep knows my voice. Adam was acquainted with the voice of God. Adam knew the voice of God. It is why when God came in the evening and says, Adam, where are you? Yes. When Adam heard the voice of God, the Bible says Adam ran and hid behind some bushes. Believe that bushes could hide you. Brothers and sisters, hear me please. You and I can't hide from God. God sees everything. God knows everything. From the day you enter this world to this day, God is watching you. You may hide from your father. You may hide from your mother. You may hide from your pastor, but you cannot hide from God. And God does not just judge us based upon what comes from our lips. God judges based upon what he has saved from our hearts. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? We must have, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Or are we just going through some religious exercise when we come to church? Look around. As I mentioned again today, every one of you that are here, there is a man in your life. Everybody. In a few days from now, as we can change mention, that we'll be coming together for a men's breakfast. And he went back saying, Pascal, he said, men's breakfast? Mm -hmm. Yes. And as you can change mention, money should not be a problem to keep your man. And I said, Pascal, you say that man? Mm -hmm. Your man. That's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. I know, but it's a man. It's a man. To keep your man home. If your man, and I whether he's a father, mother, son, if he's home, if he's living by you, tell him, listen, the weather is nice. You don't have to dress up, put on your shorts, put on your, 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 your t-shirt, and go over there. Call Brother Chick, call Deacon, tell, call Pastor Terrence, call one of those men, and find yourself over there. The men come together from 10 to from 10, no, from, from 9.30 to, thank you, sir. From 9.30 to, to 1, to 1, until close. Amen, what are the closes? Amen. Praise God, praise God. Every man that's here, every man that's here, and if you have a man in your house, tell him, listen, go over there. If he says, cool, man, things are tight, I don't get $20, call me, call all these brothers. We make sure that you get there. You have a son in your house, send him over there. We have to have games and things for the children. Let's get them there, please. 
But if you are here today and you are not under that covering, and you may be visiting our church, and you say, but Pastor Cooper, I'm not a member of this church because we spend time praying for the members of this church. When we come together, like last Friday night, we spend time praying for every member of this city, that God will protect them, that God will keep them safe. This morning I mentioned about one of our members who had just left the church, went to the market to get some groceries, leaving the market, going to a car, and the car picked her up, and she could have been a dead woman. Today she was in church worshiping Jesus. God protected her. I was just, Cooper, I'm still a little pain here and there, but I'm nothing going to stop me from giving my God a praise. You never know what God will do for you. Would you buy a head of me, please? Thank you, Jesus. And you are maybe here today and saying, Pastor, well, thank you for that word. Yeah. Thank you so much for that word. Reminding us of the necessity of remaining under a covering. We thank you so much for joining us today as we took some time to expound the Word of God to you. I trust that you are blessed richly by our teachings today and that you will not hesitate to join us again for future studies. Of course, it's our endeavor to teach you as much as we possibly can so that you can be a good steward of the Word of God. So therefore, we encourage you to again join us and you can get further information if you go right up on our website, which is www.dlci.church. There you can find more of our teachings, more of our series, and whatever we're doing. There you can find more information about our church. God bless you. Hope to see you again soon.